Hi, I'm Shelby Sukusik, and welcome to this episode of the Jim and Shelby Show, All Things Print Podcast. I'm coming to you from Momaki USA's LA facility during their digital textile microfactory event here in LA. And I'm going to not be on the camera a lot because uh, Jim is not here with me this week. So I'm going to be showing you some of the previews and some of the goings on uh, throughout the day and hopefully get a couple of interviews. So let's go. So we are about five or 10 minutes away from the show open here at Mamaki USA LA. And here's what you will see when you walk through the door. We have their main room. And then we walk into their actual technology center, and you're going to see people doing their final setups here. So it's a little bit behind the scenes. This is the large room of the technology center, and of course we have booths set up for uh, the different vendors. I'm just going to do a quick walk through here. So uh, we're expecting uh, between 80 and 100 people, I think, it, I was told, of RSVP. Uh, we've done a lot of work in this technology center, so we're partners with Momaki, of course. As we head into the presentation room, you'll see that we have tables set up. Uh, we have a nice uh, stage where we have a a lot of panel discussions going on today in the micro factory. Uh, I, in fact, will be up there uh, in about an hour, I guess. And then if we head into, I guess, what is the back demo room, we have our friends from Fisher Textiles. We have Beaver Paper. Uh, this is where our booth is. And we are going to be giving away a NYX Spectro L today, a $500 value. Uh, we'll be able to sell some NYX Mini 3s. Uh, we have some demos that we can show as well. This is the back room. We have, of course, this is a textile factory, so we have lots of textile. This is where our friends at uh, Pattern Room are. But we are excited to get this day started. The doors open in just a couple of minutes. So we'll try to get you some more information. I'll try to take some of the panel discussions, too, as we go through the day, I uh, probably won't be able to do for mine, but uh, we'll get that going. So enjoy. Hi, Shelby. Hey, thanks for uh, your interest in the tech school product. Um, it's definitely something that is going to change the way people are printing with pigment ink. Um, I'm with Cold and Hove. My name is Margo Montoya, and I am the North American um, account manager. So I handle the sales for Cold and Hove. Cold and Hove, quick history. We... Um, are a paper mill out of Airbeck, Netherlands. Uh, we invented the dye sublimation process. In 1997, we brought it to market. Um, and we sell um, our dye sublimation paper world worldwide. So our lightest weight paper is like at a 37, and our heaviest is 120. Nobody's really using, or 140. <clears throat> no one's really using those heavy, heavy papers anymore. But um, yeah, so it, we're here to talk about the Trappist. Um, the tra Trappist is a a full uh, process using Mamaki printers, Cleaverick transfer machine, and uh, the Colden Hove Texcol product. So Texcol is a, it's just like the dye sublimation process, except it is using pigment inks and it's for natural fibers. So we were running into a lot of customers saying, you know, we need to figure out a way to <clears throat> print directly, print to um, natural fibers, um, but we want a, 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 a different, we want a brighter color gamut. Um, we want something that's a little more sustainable, right? So we sat around a table and we came up with Texcol. Texcol is a coated paper. It's a special engineered coated paper that goes through a heat transfer process. Once you print on it with pigment inks, it goes through a heat transfer process with a Cleaverick calendar. The calendar is really important because the special, the process requires a, a lot of pressure. So when the the heat and the pressure hit the text cold and the fabric together, it comes out with the transferred result. This, for example, is wool. So this is a natural fiber printed with text coal. This is a nylon bathing suit printed with text coal. There's a bathing suit top. Canvas bags printed with text coal. So the difference between printing direct to fabric and text coal. So Texcol is a waterless process. You need no water. Um, it also doesn't require you to do pre-treatment or post-treatment. Um, 
the fabric doesn't need to be prepared for print. So you're eliminating the post-treatment, the pre-treatment, um, the water. You've got paper, you've got a machine with pigment ink, and you've got a transfer calendar, and you're in business. So um, the, the customers currently that we have are all doing um, garments, baby materials, uh, baby uh, blankets, and then we have people who are doing regular fashion. Um, can you think of any questions you might have about Tex Cool? Uh, no, you covered it pretty well. It was almost exactly what we talked about earlier. Yeah, so, yeah. Awesome. So for it's a so for a very small investment, so when we're looking at like the cost associated with getting up, starting direct to fabric printing, um, Tex Cool Tex Cool is like a, a a serious contender. So it's been a lot of fun to sell. Thanks. Thank you very much for joining. Um, what we're going to try to do first is define what I mean by microfactory. Okay, a microfactory, the way we envision it, and one thing I want to note uh, is this time, go ahead and click the next page. We're going to get rid of digital. Because I feel digital is default, right? I mean, I don't need to say digital, they need to say analog. You know, digital is default. That's how things get done these days. Analog is sort of the outlier, so we'll just go straight. Mamaki, so correct me, please, if I say digital, I don't mean to, because we all mean digital. Mamaki uh, textile microfactory. Now, a microfactory, the idea of a microfactory is, the way I envision it is, it's like a factory. You have a production line, and you're going to start from a certain point, and you're going to finish at a point. And I think for uh, printable textiles, for many people, the confusion is, hey, I see this, and I see this, and then I can do this. I'm like, no, you're still missing 10 steps. You don't know that yet, but you, you're going to know that. And unfortunately, by the time you figure out you're missing 10 steps, you have a problem. So what we wanted to do is sort of unpack all the steps, go through them very carefully, make sure you're, you understand them and that they're coherent, and then, then uh, allow you to understand the importance, and probably the thing I want to convey most about what this presentation of mine is about is, you want to be able to print consistently and reliably and predictably over and over again without any variations. Because when you can do that, you have a lockdown workflow. And a lockdown workflow, even if it's wrong, is still better than an erratic workflow, which is different every time yielding different results. Because a wrong workflow can just be changed to become a right workflow, but then it's consistent again. Inconsistent workflows are very difficult for your clients. <laughs> they never know what they're getting. And in textile, more than any other uh, technology, you are more prone to having inconsistent results. It is very difficult to control for a textile workflow. So the purpose of this is to go through all the steps, one by one, bring the smartest and best people that I can find in the industry, who also, by the way, I get to spend time with and ask a lot of questions. I think that's I know. Tobias last night, and he knows a lot of stuff. So that's what I wanted to also communicate to you, is things that other people know that have been doing this for 30 or 40 years communicate to you so you understand the whole process and can become better at it. And if you feel there's weaknesses in your process, reach out to the people where you think you might have some weaknesses and then make those your strengths. Okay, I want to do a little wrap up of Milwaukee's Digital Textile Factory event in LA, which was on October 30th. I'm back in North Carolina now. Uh, it was a fun event. I like that it was so focused on textile and the panel discussions. I, I love when events have a big focus on education and this one definitely did. It was fun to see some old friends and some new friends. Uh, I'm talked to Dan Marks of Wide Impressions Magazine. I hadn't seen him for a while. I saw Julia from Pattern Room and from Australia, and we had had her way back uh, as a guest, way back with the Dice Subcast. And so I think we're gonna work it out so she can be on the podcast again, because Pattern Room has some new things to show. And new friends, I met a lot of good people who are looking for some color management help or just really wanted to meet more people in the industry. Uh, I want to thank Margo, uh, who you saw earlier in this podcast, for being a guest. And we're looking forward to the next event.